SNMP trap handling is performed under the control of the EMS. There are eight generic traps that have predefined events associated with them by default and are considered to be system events. These events are device cold reboot, device warm reboot, port link down, port link up, EGP neighbor loss, spanning tree new root device, SNMP authentication failure, and VLAN topology change. If a trap definition is not in place when a trap is received, an unknown trap event and corresponding incident will be raised and the trap's OID will be included in the details attribute. If you don't want this type of event and incident raised for such traps, there's an unknown trap rule located in the initial filtering processing stage that can be enabled to suppress them. Here's an example of an unknown trap incident that was raised in response to receiving a trap that doesn't have an installed definition. The trapoid is displayed along with the raw values of the varbinds, but without understanding the trap, this is all that can be presented. A quick web search based on this trapoid shows that this trap is defined in the Cisco config man mib, which will need to be installed and loaded. Configuring the trap handling is performed by either an administrator or a user that's been granted event administration permission. In order for an incoming trap to be converted into a trap event, the definition of that trap would usually be obtained from a suitable MIB file. Intuity is prepackaged with a number of popular MIBs, and many contain trap definitions. The list of included MIBs can be seen within the Event Administration page under the Traps tab. Clicking the Manage MIBs button causes the list of installed MIB files to be displayed in alphabetic order by default. The sort order can always be changed by clicking the appropriate column header. This list corresponds to the contents of the lib MIBs folder in the Entuity server file system, so manual population of this folder is one way to extend the list. Alternatively, there's an import file feature that allows a MIB file to be uploaded from the same host that the web browser is running on, and that doesn't require any direct access to the Entuity server file system. I'm going to upload that Cisco MIB. Here it is now in the list of installed MIBs, and it's correctly shown as not loaded. I could parse one or more of these trap MIBs by selecting them and clicking the load button. However, in all likelihood, I'm going to want to create trap events and rules for the traps defined within the selected MIBs. So I'll check the create rules and events from trap definitions option first. Note that if this MIB references other files, then those other files must also be imported prior to loading the MIB. In this case, the fact that two other MIB files were required to be imported is clearly indicated. One of them is called Cisco-TC, and the other one is called Cisco-SMI. So I'll import them before attempting the load operation again. I've selected the Cisco config man MIB, and you can see that it contained three trap definitions. In reality, some or all of these definitions may have been inform requests, but they're handled in the same manner as traps, and I'll be referring to them all as such. The loading has now completed successfully, and the list of trap definitions is displayed in the parsed results window. Back in the traps tab, there's a complete list of all loaded trap definitions. If I were to select one of these trap definitions and click the details button, you would be able to see the information contained in the trap definition, including each of the varbinds and any varbind enumerations, which show the string descriptions of the numbers contained in the corresponding varbinds. The trap handler will dynamically substitute the appropriate string when displaying the varbind contents in the details attribute of the generated event. If the trap events have been automatically created during the loading of the corresponding MIB, then these events are visible under the Events tab and are classified as Custom Events. I can quickly bring these to the top of the list by sorting on the Category column. The description was obtained directly from the MIB definition, and the severity will default to Informational, which is Level 1, or Green.
Each of the trap entries listed in the Traps tab corresponds to a rule that's been automatically created and placed in the Traps processing stage in the Pre-Storage Rules folder, and these can be seen under the Rules tab. You'll be able to see how each incoming trap is associated with its corresponding trap event using a unique rule. If I were to select the Cisco Config Man trap event and click the Edit button, you can see that it employs a trap processing rule type and how the incoming trap is identified and the resulting event is specified. The way in which the details attribute of the event is formatted is also defined using the contents of each of the trap varbinds. All of these aspects can be customized and additional conditions and actions added if required. I mentioned that you'd probably want to automatically create rules and events for all the trap definitions and the MIBs that you load, but this might not be the case. If I were to load the BGP4 MIB and opt not to create the default events and rules, I'd still see the trap definitions listed in the traps tab. The rule counts would be shown as zero. Suitable rules can be easily created by selecting a trap definition and clicking the add rule button. You'll notice that unless I request a new trap event to be created, the unknown trap event will be used instead. To create a new trap event, I'll click the new button which will use the name of the trap definition for the custom event, unless you decide to change it. It's also worth noting that a clearing event and corresponding incident can also be created at this stage, if this would make your configuration workflow easier. Here's the newly created trap event. And here's the corresponding rule that I've also just created. I've just mentioned the concepts of both a clearing event and an incident. As the incoming traps raise events, these events can also open and close incidents. If no corresponding incident definitions are created, then a default incident will be automatically raised, so long as the trap event has a severity greater than informational, which is level 1 or green. As this is the default severity for all newly defined trap events, you won't see incidents being raised for them unless you manually define the incident and configure it to be opened by one or more trap events. Alternatively, you could simply set the trap event severity to be higher than level 1, which would cause a generic incident to be opened in response to the event being raised. I'm going to set the Cisco config man event trap event to have a severity level of 3 which is also known as major. Before I evaluate the results of this change, I need to deploy the EMS project. Here are the resulting incidents, which are uniquely identified as being of type Cisco config man event. They were raised automatically by the trap events with the same name and severity. The details attribute contains the list of varbinds identified by name along with their enumerated meanings rather than just the raw numbers as we saw earlier. I'd like to finish by covering a few related items. If you decide to unload a MIB that has been previously loaded, such as this one, any corresponding rules and trap events will be left in place. These traps will revert to being processed as unknown traps, and the corresponding rules will be marked in yellow to indicate that fact. If any of the rules or events are not manually deleted and an attempt is made to reload a MIB with the same trap definitions, a warning will be displayed in the Manage MIBs pop-up. As the trap handling is part of the EMS, all the related rules and events are contained within the EMS project and can be exported to other servers if required. When deploying a multi-server configuration eventuality, it is the recommended best practice to define a common EMS configuration, and this would usually be done in the central or consolidation server and include all necessary trap handling definitions.
The EMS project from this central server can then be exported and subsequently imported into each of the remote servers and thereby share the same event processing and trap handling configurations.